Hi, welcome to another episode of the Mostly Mike Show. It's been a while since I made an update video showing the renovations on the top secret headquarters of the Mostly Mike Show, but today I'm going to make it right. I moved on to the exterior renovations of the Research and Development Center, commonly known as the Garage, and I'll be building the East Wing Expansion, commonly known as the Boathouse, onto said garage. If you're new to this channel, let me get you up to speed. A while back, I posted a long and drawn out in-depth documentary for the exterior renovations to the Most of the Mike Show Studios, which I named Coco Vila in honor of my best buddy Coco, who passed away in October of 2020. I'll post the link above and in the description. I'll point out a few areas where I had hired help, but like 90% of the work that you're about to see in this video is just me doing it by my lone self. So this garage, or research and development center slash home of Trail Force One, was in dire need of some TLC, and a boathouse. Nothing really fancy for this expansion wing, just a pole building, lean-to sort of thing. To meet the building code requirements, the holes for the footings had to be over three feet deep, and my trusty post hole auger caught a rock, which didn't end well. I had three more holes to dig, I wanted to get these poured that night, so I had to resort to the old fashioned method of digging post holes, under lights. Of course this really brightened up my day. The holes were topped with cardboard form tubes, filled with concrete, laser leveled for proper elevations, then drilled for the 4x4 post bases. Posts were installed, and of course the beams were lagged to the tops, which was a real challenge working by myself. And yes, many bad words were said. Observe, there's not a lot of height to this beam, because there is only about 7 feet to the top of the block wall. But all I can do is play with the hand that I'm dealt. This doesn't allow for much roof pitch, but it is what it is. There's no need for the overhang on the existing building, so I'm going to remove it the only way I know how, or at least give it a wing and a prayer. So a few seconds into cutting the shingles using an old sacrificial circular saw blade, I thought to myself that this idea had better work out, because I'm now at the point of no return. That old blade actually cut through the shingles pretty decent. I used a sawzall, among other things, to cut the rafters off squarely, then installed the rafters which went incredibly smooth after I developed the system. This job really had its ups and downs, literally. It also had its side to sides, also literally. Well, it's rafter time, so here's the plan. I'm going to install the metal roof over the entire existing roof of the garage, which allows me to make a modified rafter that sits on top of the shingles of the main garage roof. My plan is to cut the 2x8s with the bird's mouth on the beam end, then cut the opposite end to the same angle as the roof profile, then lag it through the shingles to the rafters beneath. Next we'll install purlins and of course finish it with metal roofing. I tied the rafters to the beams with hurricane ties, boxed the rafter ends and added some purlins every two feet.
and now we're ready for metal. Not that kind of metal. Metal roofing. But we'll do that in the next one. I think I fed you enough information for one sitting, so I'll leave you with some time to digest this or regurgitate it depending on your point of view. Subscribe and click on the bell notification to stay in the loop for part two of this research and development center extravaganza, loaded with hilarious annex and madcap hijinks. You won't get this anywhere else. Please click the thumbs up if you enjoyed, tell me all about your construction stories and inhibitions in the comments, or tell me a joke. I can't wait to hear them. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.